Ken Surfs here, and uh, Monday Shave. Well, gents, uh, this one uh, some of you might like, and some of you might not like, because as promised, I am going to be doing a shave today with the uh, Reed and Barton Silver Plated Atra. And uh, I know it's a wet shaving channel. It's a shaving channel. I'm not going back uh, to cartridge razors, but in my quest to restock my collection with some razors that I had in the past that uh, got dumped or misplaced uh, during a remodel about three years ago, uh, I ended up picking up this awesome uh, silver plated Atra off eBay. Uh, st still had the sleeve with a, uh, what is it? A 100 year warranty. <laughs> A hundred year warranty. So I'm going to do a shave with that today. But at the same time, I'm going to uh, I'm going to give a little history because some people had asked, what was your uh, evolution or your transition from double edge razors? I, my transition was I used to use double edge razors. I went through the cartridge razor phase, and I'm back with double edge safety razors. And uh, to prove a point, here's a sneak preview. Of a razor I'm going to be using in my next shave and I want to thank a friend of mine Lewis for sending me this. This is a beautiful three-piece tech Gillette made in England. Look at that. I mean it's, can you see that? It's gleaming, gleaming. So look at that. I mean this is beautiful. Made in England. I'm going to be using this razor in my next shave video. But this shave video I'm going to be using the, uh, the silver plated Atra and uh, I'm going to give a brief history on uh, what I went through from my evolution of shaving. So stay tuned. All right. First uh, and foremost, my father and I, when we, we uh, started going to the cartridge razors back in the, uh, gosh, in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, it wasn't by choice. It was, uh, we were kind of steered in that direction, as probably many of you were uh, if you lived in the United States. Now, in Europe, it might have been a different story, but, uh, you know, I have grocery stores near me. We don't have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pharmacies, but, you know, the, the pharmacies within the grocery stores stopped selling the double-edged blades and they started going to the cartridge razors so out of absolute necessity you had to switch to cartridge razors if you wanted to shave now back then remember there was no internet a lot of you young guys uh, you won't realize that but there was no internet it was, was there mail order i mean what a pain in the ass if you want to get blades you know you go to the store you buy your blades and you shave with when, when you can't get the double-edged blades easily you end up going to the cartridge razors and that's what happened my father his, uh, I've still got some of his uh, equipment, uh, his first, uh, or well, his cup that he was using, this was his shave cup, he was using that shave cup and a Made in England knack, and I also, oh, let me lock this auto exposure in, there we go, otherwise it's going to go white, dark, white, dark, and he used a British rocket, well I've lost the rocket, I still have this, I still have his cup, and I still have... The scuttle that my mother got him, the shave scuttle that my mother got him. But we could not, he or I could not get blades. So by, you know, shave or don't shave, we had to go to the cartridge razor. And the first one that he went to and, and I followed was the Gillette Track 2. And uh, I was using that for a few years. And then if you remember after the Gillette Track 2 came out, the revolutionary... Atra razor came out with the uh, head that pivoted. And uh, this is an old Atra. This was the next razor that I used personally. And ironically, in not in Gillette USA or Gillette UK, but in Gillette India, they still make a version of the Atra. It's called the Vector. It's almost identical. The handle is a little bit different, as you can see. It's a little bit different. But they still make these. I think I had this thing shipped to me uh, with the blades, with four blades, just so I could kind of keep as a souvenir for like six bucks. So, you know, there are still some cool things available uh, in Europe and in uh, India. But back to the story. After the Gillette, I uh, 
you know, I think I went with the, uh, there was the Chic Quattro. This one I did keep. This one wasn't dumped. This is an old Chic Quattro razor. But the razor that I use most often was the uh, Gillette Sensor XL. In fact, I just picked up these blades, so now I've got something else to put on display. And uh, I'm not going to shave with this, but I am going to, uh, it was a little closer shave. It also had the pivoting head, and it really, really shaved for me better than the, uh, better than the Atra or better than the uh, Track 2. And then I evolved. We had the Gillette Fusion. You know, this has uh, also been stuffed underneath my uh, cabinet, but did not get dumped. Uh, there was the Mach 1 or the Mach 3 Gillette. Cool souvenir here that's that's unopened, but there was the Mach 3. I don't remember if I used one, but what I actually ended up with, the last razor, cartridge razor I used from uh, a few years ago was the, uh, the Quattro Pro Glide Electric. Has a battery in it. You turn it on, it vibrates. Kind of a cool shave. Battery still lasted. And that was the end of it. I came back to the D blades, D razors. So that was my evolution of uh, some of the, uh, the cartridge razors. And a lot of you still use the cartridge razors, not on your face. I know you, you, you've told me, a lot of you, you guys who shave your head, you're using the cartridge razors on your head. Uh, you're not using the DE or the, uh, uh, the cutthroat razors on your head. And some people have to shave their tattoos because if you got a nice tattoo, you don't want hair growing out of it. You got a picture of a girl on there and she's got hair growing out of it. Now, you don't want a bearded lady on there. So a lot of guys uh, shave their arms. In fact, when I all, every one, 100% of my tattoos, when I went to get them, uh, they have brought out a disposable Bic or an Atra razor and they have uh, shaved it for uh, getting the tattoo. Well, that was my evolution. That's uh, memory lane now. This is going to be in my, my bottom drawer, not really on display, but I've got all of these uh, cartridge razors back in the shaved in that uh, disappeared. And uh, it's kind of neat to just stop. I mean, I know if you guys are like me, if you had something and you had it for years and then suddenly it's gone, I mean, it pisses me off. So, you know, I can't rest until I've replaced it with uh, at least equal. And you can get, uh, they make some kind of modern sensor Excel too, uh, Gillette does, uh, made in India again, or coming from India. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to, for, for, display purposes or just I wanted to see that vector. So all right, enough chatter. Let's get to the shave. Right, so I'm going to be using that Atra and I'm going to be using uh, from Amazon, Persona makes brand new blades for the Atra or the Track 2. This will fit both of them and I think this sleeve was like three or four bucks. You can get hundreds of them but uh, I just wanted to shave with a modern blade. See how that is. First time using a Persona so I will use that. And since it's back in the 80s, actually this is probably from the 60s, I'm for shaving, uh, aftershave, I'm going to use this today. I'm going to use the uh, Old Spice shaving mug. And I'm going to use some Bearded Jacks Old Spice style scent soap. So I'm going to use that today with uh, an Ever Ready brush. So all I got to do is, since I had all this stuff laid out on the sink, I got to clear up just a second and get the shave ready to rock. All right, got everything cleared, had the brush soaking. It's a, uh, it's a pure badger rebuild brush. You've seen me use this before. And I've got the uh, soap in there. Let's start whipping that up. Someone asked at the beginning of my last video, as I was kind of jazzed, I was about to start doing my, my shave video and then uh, uh, Caps Live video uh, feed came through on YouTube. And Sunday, actually, uh, Steve's live uh, YouTube feed, the Suffolk Shaver, he was, uh, God, this bearded jack is coming out of there. He was, uh, he was doing a broadcast. And that was pretty cool because there were a lot of people on that channel. Uh, Kevy Shaves, Paul H. Films. There was just a lot of uh, shavers that I watched videos of, and they were all chatting live. So, uh... Uh, Steve, <coughs> the Suffolk Shaver, he's, uh, he's going to do a good giveaway when he hits a thousand subscribers and he's getting close. 
he was going to give away a gift here, a gift there. Now he says he's giving away 50 pounds or equivalent uh, in your country's currency. So that's kind of cool. So if you have not checked out his, uh, I think Paul is going to do the same for him. But if you have not checked out uh, his channel, uh, check it out. I'll put the link right here. Man, you couldn't even get soaps. It seems like the shaving soaps are going away. It was all the uh, ch -ch -ch aerosol shave cream when they started phasing out the DE razors in the United States. Was it that way in Europe too, guys? I mean, did it happen, you older gents like me, you know, who uh, fart dust and pee rust? You know, was it, uh, was it like that? Did the shaving creams go away and now they're making a comeback? It just made it hard to find. So out of necessity, you ended up going to uh, to these items. All right, I've got that Persona blade loaded. Look at that, silver. All right, let's see how she does. <laughs> Feels weird already. Somebody had uh, tipped me off, because you know, you see I've got Bond memorabilia here. Somebody had tipped me off that on Hulu, there's a documentary on George Lazenby. Uh, Becoming Bond, it's called. And it showed his story of how he replaced Sean Connery for the film on Her Majesty's Secret Service. And then gave it all up after one Bond movie. And I'm going to be honest with you. I've never watched on Her Majesty's Secret Service. So my dad was always pissed off. You know, this Australian guy's taking over as James Bond. But from what I've seen, he did okay. And I hear the movie itself as an excellent plot. So if you can get away from the idea of, you know, it's George Lazenby and you may or may not like him. But, uh, man, I thought it looked good. So I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch on Our Majesty's Secret Service. And I'm actually bidding on a, a lobby card from that movie with George Lazenby's autograph that uh, I'm going to put here. I mean, I've got Dalton. I've got almost everybody else. We'll see how it goes. And Diana Rigg was in that movie. She gave up her role in the Avengers TV series to film that movie. She used to be good in the Avengers. You can now catch her on Game of Thrones. But she's a little older now. Just a little. But a super, super nice lady. Uh, when my daughter was very young, God, we're probably going back 15 years ago, I had the box set of the Avengers, and uh, on the weekend, we would watch about two or three episodes, and she liked Mrs. Peel. And I found out, you know, you can find anything on the internet, I found out that uh, Diana Rigg lived in London, and uh, she had a mailing address. And I had my daughter write a letter to her, saying, hey, I'm a big fan, Diana Rigg. And she sent back a cool autograph for my daughter, saying, thank you for watching and I th always thought that was kind of cool when celebrities will do that and they will, uh, you know, they will answer your emails or answer your letters. And that was kind of awesome. And in fact, that's what happened with uh, my James Gardner. That was in the, uh, uh, probably the late 70s. I was a big fan of Maverick and some of uh, Rockford Files. And he had finished Rockford Files and I don't think he was doing much. But I got his mailing address, sent him a big letter, big fan. He sent that back to me. And I thought that was very, very cool. Very cool. Then his career, re you know, revived again. He was on comedies and movies. The Maverick remake, 
See, you can cut yourself with a, uh, a cartridge razor too, gents. But it really feels weird. It'd be bitching if this handle could go on a, a double-edged uh, razor. Gave an awesome shave. It's probably my last cartridge shave. But it gave an awesome one. But I truly prefer the safety razor. But who knows, next time I shave my tattoo, maybe I'll use that. But that was mainly for a display piece. Very good. Very good. Let me see here. La, 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 la. What am I looking for? I was looking for my styptic pen, but we can do without that. Old Spice. The good stuff. Oh, the burning stuff. Oh, man. Well, there we go. A little trip down memory lane. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, don't worry. Uh, still a, a wet shaver. But, uh, man, I had to give that for a spin. That's like... I once bought a vintage, I'm gonna tell you a little side story. I once bought a vintage, well, brand new, brand new. It was made in, uh, I think it was made in 2000, a Colt, 45 long Colt, single action revolver. I paid $850 for it at the time. Same, it was nickel plated, same exact gun. Uh, the John Wayne used in a lot of his movies, four and three quarter inch barrel, 45 long Colt, beautiful gun. Came with a warning. It says this is a collector's firearm. If you fire it, you're going to uh, reduce uh, the value of it greatly. Uh, it's intended for collecting. I stared at that gun on and off for about a year. I said, screw it. What good's having something if you're not gonna use it? So I uh, took that gun out and fired it. And uh, when I got into cowboy action shooting, several years ago, that gun was on my side and it worked beautiful. So, I mean, why have something that you're never gonna try? These guys go out and buy a brand new car, put it on blocks and save it for 10, 20 years. Man, if you're gonna buy it, use it. And that's why I wanted to use that razor. All right, well, till next time, it's Ken Surf. Thanks for putting up with this long video and a lot of talking. I know there's gonna be one or two guys comment saying, oh, you talk too much. All right, I'm ready for it. All right, till next time, have a great night.